We're going to spend time uh, in chapter 7. In order to avoid sexual immorality, get married. However, this is not the only reason why you get married. Sex inside of marriage is one of the ways that you do express your affection towards your spouse. It's not the only way, but it is one of the ways. You know, many times we get into marriage saying, my spouse owes me. Hey, wake up. You owe your spouse. You owe something. Render affection that, you, that is due to your husband or your wife. You owe that person. When you look at sex within marriage, you, you and I should understand this, that our, 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 our approach should be, I owe you and I'm giving you what I owe and I know I will be blessed as I bless you. I want you to understand the wife doesn't have authority over her own body. Similarly, the husband doesn't have authority over his own body. But in marriage, you're actually placing your body under the authority of your spouse. And of course, you're doing it willingly. That you are choosing to submit your body. Bring it under the authority of your spouse. There's only one person on the entire planet who will have that kind of authority over your body. That's your spouse. Do not use sex as a weapon against your spouse. Because when you do that, you're actually engaging in something that is very self-destructive to your own marriage. It explains to us that Satan can take an advantage of that kind of approach. So don't deprive. Paul was single as he's writing this. And so he's saying, look, there is this blessing of being single, but each one has his own gift from God. Verse 7. So whether you're married or whether you're single, both marriage and singleness are gifts from God. There is a right way and at the right time. And until then, there is grace available for each one of us in the state in which we are. Whether you're single or you're married, there's grace available. Uh, also, I need to point out here that Divorce is not commanded, it's permitted. Meaning, you don't have to use it. If you can forgive, even if, uh, if, even if the marriage has been violated uh, by sexual uh, immorality, by adultery. Uh, even if it has been violated, you have the option of forgiving. Yes, you do have the option of divorce in that situation. But you also have the option of, of forgiving and seeing that marriage restored. The, what God wants is for you to stay in that marriage. So even if your spouse, at this point in time, is not a believer... Don't use that as an excuse to walk away from your marriage. Stay in it. God wants even those situations, those marriages to be preserved. You, wherever God has called you, and whatever God has distributed you, verse 17, you stay in that place. Don't think that you need to change your station or your state right now in order to follow Jesus Christ. Remain there. Remain where you are. You stay there until, of course, maybe God does call you in the future. Sometime in the future he may call you. Fine, that's fine. But right now, you can still walk with God. You can remain with God. You can grow in God. You can honor God right where you are. You belong to Jesus. You will follow his plan, his purpose for you. Paul is not, in this passage, he is not, for, he is not forbidding to marry. He's only saying that if you... So remain single. You will be able to give you more undivided attention to our primary objective of serving God and focusing on God. That's what he's saying. Amen. So that's 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Amen.